life has started on this planet since 14 billion years ago people come in this world and leave among them some people have made their name heard across the world but does they always had a successful life do they always wanted to become what they were what were their struggles how did they live do they got a peaceful end to know about all this let's take a walk with us to the facts on forcing Hello guys welcome back to the second episode of Facts Unforeseen and we will continue the life journey of Sir Charlie Chaplin as we promised you in the previous episode so this episode is the continuation of the first episode if you haven't watched it yet you can click on the i button so without wasting any time let's start the second episode 1918 to 1922 first national in january 1918 Chaplin was visited by leading British singer and comedian Harry Lauder, and the two acted in a short film together. Mutual was patient with Chaplin's decreased rate of output, and the contract ended amicably. With his aforementioned concern about the decline in quality of his films because of contract scheduling stipulations, Chaplin's primary concern in finding a new distributor was independence. Cindy Chaplin, then his business manager, told the press. Charlie be allowed all the time he needs and all the money for producing the way he wants. It is quality, not quantity, we are after. In June 1917, Chaplin signed to complete eight films for First National Exhibitors Circuit in return for one million dollars. He chose to build his own studio, situated on five acres of land off Sunset Boulevard, with production facilities of the highest order. Charlie Chaplin Studios was completed in January 1918 and Chaplin was given freedom over the making of his pictures. A Dog's Life, released April 1918, was the first film under the new contract. In it, Chaplin demonstrated his increasing concern with story construction and his treatment of the tramp as a sort of Pierrot. The film was described by Louis Delluc as cinema's first total work of art. Chaplin then embarked on the third Liberty Bond campaign. touring the United States for one month to raise money for the allies of the First World War. He also produced a short propaganda film at his own expense, donated to the government for fundraising, called The Bond. Chaplin's next release was war-based, placing the tramp in the trenches for shoulder arms. Associates warned him against making a comedy about the war but, as he later recalled, dangerous or not, the idea excited me. He spent 4 months filming the picture, which was released in October 1918 with great success. United Artists, Mildred Harris, and the Kid. After the release of Shoulder Arms, Chaplin requested more money from First National, which was refused. Frustrated with their lack of concern for quality, and worried about rumors of a possible merger between the company and famous players Lasky, Chaplin joined forces with Douglas Fairbanks, Mary Pickford, and D.W. Griffith to form a new distribution company, United Artists, in January 1919. The arrangement was revolutionary in the film industry, as it enabled the four partners, all creative artists, to personally fund their pictures and have complete control. Chaplin was eager to start with the new company and offered to buy out his contract with First National. They refused and insisted that he complete the final six films owed. Before the creation of United Artists, Chaplin married for the first time. The 16-year-old actress Mildred Harris had revealed that she was pregnant with his child, and in September 1918, he married her quietly in Los Angeles to avoid controversy. Soon after, the pregnancy was found to be false. Chaplin was unhappy with the union and, feeling that marriage stunted his creativity, struggled over the production of his film Sunnyside. Harris was by then legitimately pregnant, and on July 7, 1919, gave birth to a son. Norman Spencer Chaplin was born malformed and died three days later. The marriage ended in April 1920, with Chaplin explaining in his autobiography that they were irreconcilably mismated. Losing the child, plus his own childhood experiences, are thought to have influenced Chaplin's next film, which turned the tramp into the caretakers. Work on the picture was for a time delayed by more turmoil in his personal life. 
First National had on 12th of April announced Chaplin's engagement to the actress May Collins, whom he had hired to be his secretary at the studio. By early June, however, Chaplin suddenly decided he could scarcely stand to be in the same room as Collins, but instead of breaking off the engagement directly, he stopped coming into work, sending word that he was suffering from a bad case of influenza, which May knew to be a lie. Ultimately work on the film resumed, and following its September 1921 release, Chaplin chose to return to England for the first time in almost a decade. He wrote a book about his journey, titled My Wonderful Visit. He then worked to fulfill his first national contract, releasing Payday in February 1922. The Pilgrim, his final short film, was delayed by distribution of disagreements with the studio and released a year later. 1923-1938, Silent Features Paris, a romantic drama about ill-fated lovers. Chaplin intended it to be a star-making vehicle for Edna Purviance and did not appear in the picture himself other than in a brief, uncredited cameo. He wished the film to have a realistic feel and directed his cast to give restrained performances. In real life, he explained, men and women try to hide their emotions rather than seek to express them. A Woman of Paris premiered in September 1923 and was acclaimed for its innovative, subtle approach. The public, however, seemed to have little interest in a Chaplin film without Chaplin and it was a box office disappointment. The filmmaker was hurt by this failure, he had long wanted to produce a dramatic film and was proud of the result, sequences, such as the tramp eating issue and the dance of the roles. McNabb has called it the quintessential Chaplin film. Chaplin stated at its release, this is the picture that I want to be remembered by. Lita Gray and the Circus While making The Gold Rush, Chaplin married for the second time. Mirroring the circumstances of his first union, Lita Gray was a teenage actress, originally set to star in the film, whose surprise announcement of pregnancy forced Chaplin into marriage. She was 16 and he was 35, meaning Chaplin could have been charged with statutory rape under California law. He therefore arranged a discreet marriage in Mexico on November 25, 1924. They originally met during her childhood and she had previously appeared in his works The Kid and the Idol Class. Their first son, Charles Spencer Chaplin III, was born on May 5, 1925, followed by Sidney Earl Chaplin on March 30, 1926. On July 6, 1925, Chaplin became the first movie star to be featured on a Time magazine cover. It was an unhappy marriage and Chaplin spent long hours at the studio to avoid seeing his wife. In November 1926, Gray took the children and left the family home. A bitter divorce followed, in which Gray's application, accusing Chaplin of infidelity, abuse, and of harboring perverted sexual desires, was leaked to the press. Chaplin was reported to be in a state of nervous breakdown, as the story became headline news and groups formed across America calling for his films to be banned. Eager to end the case without further scandal, Chaplin's lawyers agreed to a cash settlement of $600,000, the largest awarded by American courts at that time. His fan base was strong enough to survive the incident. And it was soon forgotten, but Chaplin was deeply affected by it. Less than five months after the divorce, Gray's former butler Don Solovich was murdered in Utah, and articles speculated about connections between Chaplin and the murder. Before the divorce suit was filed, Chaplin had begun work on a new film, The Circus. 8. Chaplin had been working on the story for almost a year. City Lights followed the tramp's love for a blind flower girl, played by Virginia Cheryl, and his efforts to raise money for her sight-saving operation. It was a challenging production that lasted 21 months, with Chad actress Paulette Goddard in July 1932, and the pair began a relationship. He was not ready to commit to a film, however, and focused on writing a serial about his travels, published in Woman's Home Companion. The trip had been a stimulating experience for performance of a gibberish song did, however, give the tramp a voice for the only time on film. After recording the music, Chaplin released Modern Times in February 1936. It was his first feature in 15 years to adopt political references and social realism 
a factor that attracted considerable press coverage despite Chaplin's attempts to downplay the issue. The film earned less at the box office than his previous features and received mixed reviews, as some viewers dislike the politicizing. Today, Modern Times is seen by the British Film Institute as one of Chaplin's great features, while David Robinson says it shows the filmmaker at his unrivaled peak as a creator of visual comedy. Following the release of Modern Times, Chaplin left with Goddard for a trip to the Far East. Chaplin, Goddard, and a Japanese servant named Yun Mari arrived in Saigon at 8.30 a.m. on April 13, 1936 where they stayed at the Continental Hotel before going on a trip to visit multiple locations in French Indochina. After Saigon they visited Phnom Penh to view Angkor Wat, returning to Saigon to go to Da Lot, followed by Hu, arriving in Da Nang at 23rd of April where he visited the Marble Mountains and the Henri Parmentier Museum. On 29th of April they arrived in Hanoi, the capital city of French Indochina, where they stayed at the Metropole Hotel. In the afternoon of 5th of May they visited the popular tourist destination Ha Long Bay, after visiting Ha Long Bay the couple left from Haiphong to Hong Kong on board of a ship named the Canton. The couple had refused to comment on the nature of their relationship, and it was not known whether they were married or not. Sometime later, Chaplin revealed that they married in Canton during this trip. By 1938, the couple had drifted apart, as both focused heavily on their work. Although Goddard was again his leading lady in his next feature film, The Great Dictator. She eventually divorced Chaplin in Mexico in 1942, citing incompatibility and separation for more than a year. If you like the video, please do like, share and subscribe. It takes a lot of effort to make these videos. In the second episode, we will discuss further airs, films, popularity of Charlie Chaplin, challenges in life, affairs, marriages, children, cause of death, dead body conspiracy and the burial conspiracy. So do not miss the next episode of the facts unforeseen.